Hi everybody and welcome to my movie library. Tonight we're going to do the second half of my birthday. Uh, yeah, because my birthday haul, the rest of the gifts have come in. I'm very excited to talk to you guys about them. I got some really cool stuff and I'm going to get right into it. But I got a couple of newsy things to ta talk about tonight and uh, let's just do that right now. We're not even going to turn off the camera or switch focus or any of that stuff. Uh, basically, Arrow right now, Arrow Academy and Arrow Video, it's having a flash sale that's going on. Go to the website, check it out. A lot of stuff is severely marked down. And uh, myself, I'm moving in about a month or two, a month and a, I've been about two months. So, uh, needless to say, I can't get anything this time. But please let me know what you're getting from the sale, and uh, so I can cry about stuff that I don't get. No, I got honestly, I did well on my birthday. I'm very excited about over the stuff that that I got, so uh, I was okay at uh, sitting at the sale. Now, when Vinegar Syndrome sale comes up, it's going to be a little bit harder. I'm not going to lie to you there, guys. I'm, uh, I'm a huge fan of that company, and that comes into uh, what I'm uh, doing tonight, actually. Tonight, I have some Vinegar Syndrome stuff to show you guys. I got some for my birthday. I got uh, another box set for my birthday, and... Uh, that's some pretty cool stuff. So I got some other stuff that I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, I had planned to do like an, an arrow overview, but I do those a lot, and I don't want to like uh, risk repeating myself this soon. Uh, but down the road, I'll I'll do another uh, I'll do a complete overview of like my entire arrow collection. Uh, I'm gonna get into the movies a bit. I'm uh, I'm not just gonna put them up and show them and say, this is what I got, this is what I got, this is what I got. Uh, I'll actually talk a little bit about the films. I won't get too in-depth because some of them I really do want to do reviews on, but uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have a little bit of fun with it and uh, see exactly what some of the features are, uh, why I picked the films that I picked, because these were ones that I, that I chose for my uh, birthday as opposed to some of the ones that I didn't know about. And uh, I got one weird one too that was given to me, and uh, I'll show you that. I'll be right back. So let's get the weird out of the way first. Let's do uh, that one. And uh, I was at my uh, my favorite uh, record store, retro gaming store, movie store, kind of all out there. Uh, Atomic Records. And Atomic Records is a lot of stuff. They have a lot of the uh, the Funko figures. They have a lot. Of, they have a ton of records. Really cool stuff. CDs, movies, video games, uh, different systems and stuff. Uh, one that I was handheld. One that I now have that I was playing tonight for quite a while actually brought me back to my uh, to my younger days but they gave me this one I saw this one on the counter basically they were getting some inventory basically they cycle out their inventory because they have so much stuff that not everything can be out at the same time so they'll be uh, they'll cycle stuff out in, in periods and you know, hopefully some stuff will sell and they'll bring more stuff out and other times they'll just cycle things in and out like just to keep it fresh uh, but I saw this there it's from a company that I, I'm pretty sure isn't around anymore good times and I had to have this I definitely did, uh, and I asked them about it, I asked them what the price was, and I was buying some stuff there, they said, uh, I was a good customer, it was my birthday this, that week, so this was a freebie, and uh, it's kind of a cool one, that is Jekyll and Hyde, David Hasselhoff, and this is the musical J Jekyll and Hyde, this is, uh, runs about 130, 34 minutes, I think, 34 minutes long, and it's, uh, it's different, now, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure that this was really ill-timed and when it was coming out. Uh, Jekyll and Hyde, the musical, which David Hasselhoff had put a lot of time and work into. David Hasselhoff is actually a uh, big over in like other countries, Europe, Germany, for, like with his uh, with his singing career. Uh, he was for a while anyway. Uh, this was going to be his kind of his big his big thing that he was going to do. Now the night that this was going to come on come on TV, the night this was going to air, the kind of like the whole pay per view of this thing back in the whole pay per view days. Uh, on paper, it was like a huge thing. O.J. Simpson's Ford Bronco, white Ford Bronco chase happened. The O.J. Simpson thing happened that night, and pretty much everybody that had planned to tune into anything else completely forgot and tuned in to the o to the news and watching O.J. and watching the Bronco go slowly down the road. Uh, the you know the footage we've seen so so often nowadays, even seen it like later on like put in like wrestling like shows and stuff like that for a uh, for more humorous effect uh, but it's a shame I've been 
always been meaning to, uh, to check this out. I haven't seen this one yet. It's one that I am kind of interested in seeing. Is it going to be so bad it's good? Is it going to be like one of those kind of those sleeper hits that not a lot of people know about? I'm kind of hoping that it's the uh, hoping it's the latter. But either way, you guys know that I'm in for like uh, kind of like different kind of intriguingly cool little films. Uh, apparently, they say here that includes the hit "Someone Like You." This is a moment and once upon a dream. So uh, all the sights and sounds of this astonishing stage hit captured on ten high definition cameras. You've got the best seat in the house. So I'll be really interested in seeing how this one turns out. Jekyll and Hyde, have you guys seen it? Did you, uh, did you watch it back in the day? Did you watch it over the O.J. Simpson thing? Or did you uh, catch it on Good Times? Or is this out by any other companies as well? I just thought it was really interesting. Uh, direct from Broadway is the uh, kind of like this, kind of the sub-label they use there. It's a Good Times video. I remember Good Times back in the day. They were like a, kind of like a lower budget, kind of Mill Creek-ish ish company, when, you know, the way Mill Creek used to be when they started. And, but they would get some like amazing stuff, and they put out like movies that no other company had gotten, whether, I'm not sure if they got them all, like legit or not, but uh, they did. And I'm actually really interested in checking this one out. That was the freebie. Now, next up is my Vinegar Syndrome stuff. Well, I got a few titles here from Vinegar Syndrome. And uh, let's talk about them one at a time. Now, one, I, want, I don't want to talk about a lot because I'm, I really haven't seen it in a long time. I really want to dive into it. But I do remember it as being not at all like it looks. Uh, the movie is Malibu High. Now, if you've ever seen this movie, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. This looks like it's joysticks or porkies or just one of many other regular teen sexploitation comedies and there is aspects of that in the film but that is not what Malibu High is and I don't want to, to I want to tell you more but I really want to do a good review on this film so I'm not going to go too much into it what I will tell you guys though is I'll give you the features on this one here so we've got a group commentary track with producer Lawrence Folds and actress Tammy Taylor there's video interviews with producer Lawrence Folds actress Tammy Taylor and our, our, our actor Garth Pillsbury a Q&A from a screening at the New Beverly Cinema with producer Lawrence Folds, Tammy Taylor, and Alex Mann. He's got two short films there, Struggle for Israel and Grandpa and Marika. And then as original theatrical trailer, production stills gallery, reversible cover artwork. Now, they say reversible cover artwork, but really all it is, you see where Malibu is up here? It's a putt down here. I'll show you. I don't even really need to take it out or anything for it either. It's just, uh, just right there, the... Same hour, because just moved. It makes it look more, I guess, more suggestive that you would actually be able to see more with Malibu High moved from where it was. But uh, that's not the case. This is the case. Oh, dad joke. I'm going to get... People are going to mention that. Uh, ever since my better half mentioned my, my dad jokeish humor, I, I get comments about that. And never before, you know, but, but now I do. Uh, Malibu High, one I'm going to be reviewing in the future, one I'm really looking forward to checking out. Love Vinegar Syndrome, love their stuff. Very, very excited to get this film. Next up is a classic movie that's uh, in the so bad, it's good category. And you know what? I watch things, man. I experience things. I can see, I can go through any test of fire right now. I watched the worst of the worst. And when you've watched the worst of the worst... Don't feel free to comment down in the section, comment section down below and say, I experienced things. Hashtag I experienced things. There you go. Anyway, Hobgoblins. It is a fun little movie. Again, I see, you know, say, have Critters, uh, Gremlins, type of knockoff. It, very cheesy, very, very low budget. I think Kenneth J. Hall did the, uh, did the creatures here. I know he's one of the creature sculptors because he actually interviewed him on this, uh, on this disc. This is actually it's a really cool disc. There's a lot of features on here. Uh, it says reversible cover, but it's not. It just has like a picture really of, of the critters on the inside. It's just picture artwork on the inside. It's really what it is. But it is a solid package. This was a really inexpensive one too, by the way. Feature-wise, again, scanned and restored in 2K from the original 35mm camera negative. Archival commentary track with director Rick Sloan. Hobgoblins revisited. Brand new making of featurette. Brand new interview with Hobgoblin creator, fabricator, Kenneth J. Hall. Hobgoblins, the making of, of a disaster piece. Hobgoblins invade Comic-Con. 
There's also a trailer, reversible cover, and the English subtitles as well. So let's just look on the inside. I'll show you guys what I mean by there. It's not being like so. There, you'll see there's again, it's a Blu ray DVD combo pack, and it's just like pictures of the hobgoblins himself on the uh, on the inside. Really cool. Again, all these here that I'm doing right now are, are future reviews for my channel. So future movie video library that you see will have uh, these reviews like kind of sprinkled throughout the uh, through my vlog. So look look forward to that. I hope, and you're going to see me probably in a lot of pain after watching stuff like Hobgoblins. But again, not as much pain as hashtag I experience things. I'm going to make that a thing. Just, just wait. I'm going to make that a thing. Next up is the, uh, the classic horror comedy uh, with some great screen queens. It's got Lenny Quigley, Brink Stevens, and Michelle Bauer in it all together. Fantastic. And that is Nightmare Sisters. This is a really, really cool little film. Uh, again, it's one I enjoy. This is a very low-budget film. And under other hands, this may not have done so well, but... The fact that it had uh, Lenny Quigley, Brink Stevens, and Michelle Bauer really, really helped. Dave Dakota is the director on this one here. It, it's a fun film. It's a cheesy film. If you've ever seen Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball Bolorama, a.k.a. The Imp, then you know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the style of humor that they use within this film. You have like three, three girls who are more like kind of like homely, nerdish characters, and they become these sexy sirens. How does it happen? What happens after that? Well, you'd have to watch the film to find out. Or you can wait till I do my review, but do both. Watch the film, see if you agree with me when I do my review, and uh, we can converse about it in a, in a future C-section. Speaking of features, we got a, again, scanned and restored in 2K from the original 35mm uh, camera negative. We have a, a commentary track for director Dave Dakota and actress Lenny Quigley, a director introduction, alternate feature-length TV version, which should be interesting to watch as well. Obviously, nude gun. Kind of like when you're watching, when you're watching like the uh, Joe Bob Briggs, and he'd be like, you know, there's been three stabbings, one strangulation, four breasts, of which we're not going to show on the film tonight. Uh, that that type of thing. That's where you get the TV version. But you get alternate footage, alternate scenes. Sometimes you get a whole new storyline. I'm not sure. Well, you hear? I don't know. I haven't seen the TV version. Uh, interview with writer, associate producer Kenneth J. Hall. The dude gets around. He gets lots of. Features on there, bloopers and outtakes, reversible cover artwork, and English SDH subtitles. So, is there a reversible artwork? No. There's just like a, a picture of Linnea, kind of like a, opening her mouth, really creepy-like. Again, it's Blu-ray DVD. Camel pack. Very cool. I'm a huge fan of uh, the Linnea Quigley films. I need to pick up, uh, what's the other one I need to get? There's another one. It's escaping my mind right now. But I will remember. Just not yet. The next one I've got is more on the adult side of it. So if you're under the age of 18, just cover your eyes right now. Not that there's anything going to be shown on here or anything to be really talked about, but it is a film that is made for, uh, for adults. Now, I don't normally get like adult ish films. Well, not the newer stuff, but I do, I am very, very interested in the classic age of erotica. That's something that, uh, that really intrigues me. Uh, basically, when they were making films, when they were really making films that uh, had, you know, had hardcore sequences in them, but they could play on their own as, without those scenes in there, and they just used real actors just some fantastic actors. In some of them, they use some amazing actors, some great camera work, and uh, you'd be remiss to even realize that it's an adult film until the scene comes up. There's a couple of movies that I've watched like that where uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even know it was an adult film until, whoa, okay. And then you know, then you know very well. And the one that I got is Trashy Lady. Now, Trashy Lady stars uh, Ginger Lynn, uh, I think Amber Lynn's in it, no relation. And uh, Harry Reams. Harry Reams is a very popular and uh, well-known actor uh, from back in the day. He was uh, really big when it came to this. There was ha Harry Reams, Herschel Savage, John Leslie, uh, and uh, Jamie Gillis. Those names in adult cinema, those are people that can actually act. 
I think John Leslie, Jamie Gillis would probably be the two uh, strongest actors that you would see in, uh, in this style of film. Harry Reams the very, uh, did very good as a comedic actor. He didn't even really, he kind of fluked into the whole like uh, adult industry thing. He wasn't going to do it. He uh, was kind of a behind the scenes type of guy. And I think it was on Deep Throat or something like that where basically he got put in at the last minute. And uh, a legend was born, I guess. Well, there's a lot of, like, seriously uh, twisted backstory to the movie Deep Throat. Yeah, and that was like a, a, mainstream class, a mainstream classic. Did you know that Deep Throat 2, the sequel to Deep Throat, actually isn't an adult film? In fact, it's not an X-rated film. It's barely a softcore film, and the nudity is really, really tame. It does have the actress from the original Deep Throat in it and a bunch of other actors, but uh, they went in a much different direction and tried to make it much more mainstream. And uh, from what I heard, I don't remember if I've ever seen it. Maybe I have, but I don't know. It didn't work out so well. But what about this one right here? What about Trashy Lady? Well, basically, it is a reversal of My Fair Lady, of Pygmalion. What goes on here is there's a gangster, and he needs a... A girlfriend of all because the one that he had is split. He meets up with Ginger Lynn. The only problem is he's a gangster. And Harry Reams plays it kind of kind of comedic. He can't have a really classy he can't have a really classy dam on his arm. How's it gonna make him look? Uh, <laughs> but uh so he, he hires like Amber Lynn, who's like the uh, girlfriend of uh, of another mob boss <clears throat> who's out of town to uh to come in. And basically teach her how to be less classy, really. To teach her how to be more of a gangster's mall. To be, a, to be one of those film noir type women. Interesting little film. Uh, it is period. It is like the 20s, 30s. You do wear the gangster outfits. Uh, I, I enjoy these, these here. And I do enjoy, story-wise, uh, I am the, the type of person that... No, well, I will I'll definitely watch the film. But I, actually, if I get involved in the story, I may actually... Fast forward the adult scenes to uh, to get to the story portion of it. That's why so when they can always have like a kind of like a softer core version put on the on there, I appreciate it because uh, I may watch that and instead sometimes because I just want to watch the story, especially if I'm going to do a review. So this one here is again scanned from 2K from the 35 millimeter original camera negative, and it has first ever auto commentary with director of photography Tom Howard, moderated by filmmaker David McCabe. We have an auto commentary with co-star Her oh Herschel Savage is in this one, and XRCO co-founder Bill Mar Margold. And see, when I'm talking to you about this film, I'm not talking to you because I've watched this film already. I'm talking to you because I remember seeing this when I was younger. Uh, there's a bonus feature film called Coming West, directed by S Steve Scott and phot photographed by Tom Howard. He's actually a good DP, so that should be fairly decent. And this one here was directed by Steve Scott as well. Uh, again, yeah, Ginger Lynn, Harry Reams, Herschel Savage, Amber Lynn. I knew Amber Lynn was in this one. I remembered. Uh, Bunny Blue, of course, Tom Barn and Carolot, and uh, I think Carolot's passed away. It's uh, sad to see how many of them have actually uh, passed away through. Uh... Yeah, it was a uh, it was a different time. Now the next two I got, I'm actually really really proud of. I knew I wanted these. I really wanted these. If anybody out there is a fan of Vinegar Syndrome, it's it's me. Uh, over the last year, especially in 2017, I really became a big fan of Vinegar Syndrome. I love the way that they put their packages out. They do it. I got this in a week, and that included Easter, with the Easter of the Long Weekend. I ordered it just before that. The Long Weekend came. By April the 1st, my movies were being sent out, and it, uh, I think it cleared customs. They had cleared customs in a no, they clear customs by April the 1st. So they were in Canada on April the 1st. I received these movies here. Uh, not last night, but the night before. So about two days ago now. Um, I actually had a video to do on these last night. But I, uh, I, didn't, get them, uh, I didn't get the video done in time. And I didn't like the way that it came out. So I uh, had to redo it. So five films, five years... Uh, there are two volumes that were done. One, Basically, what happened is that they had movies that they originally put out, and they were just DVD releases. Now, uh, people had been asking and clamoring for to get a Blu-ray, to get an upgrade of it. 
So what they did, nobody knew this was happening. They went out and they did remasters for 10 different films. Basically, five films, five years. They broke it up into two things. They're known for their exploitation horror stuff, and they're known for their kind of golden age erotica stuff. Basically, if you've ever seen the Peak Ram, or if you've ever saw one like Trashy Lady or the Taboo series, then you know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the Golden Age erotic stuff. But maybe that's not what you're into. Maybe you're buying Vinegar Syndrome for some of the other stuff, like Hobgoblins or Psychic Killer. Maybe you want the one to get the, the classic movie, The Hearse, uh, from them, or one of their many other titles, like, again, one of the adult ones that's actually really good and has a really good story, A Woman's Torment. And it actually gives you the, the option on that one to watch it in a non adult aspect, uh, which is cool as well. Maybe Jack Frost or Demon Wind is how you came across Vinegar Syndrome. But the first thing you notice is that, one, shipping is fantastic. In the United States, you, you spend over $50, shipping is free. In Canada, you spend over $100, shipping is free. International, 150, over $150, shipping is free. And here's the really cool thing. Here's the thing that sells me on Vinegar Syndrome over so many other companies. There are bigger companies out there like Shout Factory and Screen Factory uh, that will give you lowered or reduced shipping in times. There are some places like Arrow, not Arrow, really, that's Screen Factory, they'll actually only give free shipping to the United States, and you take the brunt of the shipping. Sometimes they reduce it, not all the time, uh, if you're from another country. That's, uh, the, and they're a bigger company. Vinegar Syndrome manages to not only get movies shipped out to you with a certain price point for free, but it's not the cheap shipping. My, my Vinegar Syndrome titles came boxed and well padded in a, in a box, perfect condition, in a week. Free shipping. I've had times when I would have ordered from other companies, maybe Arrow or, uh, or Screen Factory. They don't come that fast. They come sometimes... I'll fluke and they'll come fairly fast, but they'll rarely ever come that fast. Vinegar Syndrome does come that fast. And uh, when I do a Vinegar Syndrome versus whatever company it's going to be, and that is coming up, that's a big advantage. That's a bit of a spoiler there, but that's a big advantage. Anyway, I got the two limited edition, 20, they only made 2,500 copies of these, so if you want to get them, Definitely grab them. My dad only grabbed one of the volumes. I can't do that. I'm a completist. I have to have both volumes. No way can I just get the one. Now, some people were miffed that the features that were on the DVDs weren't included in the uh, here with the with these films. And I think with commentaries, if there's a commentary that should have been, that really should have been, could have been carried over. But the whole features is that you're paying a very little amount for five movies, some of them that have gone out of print, that were only on DVD, and now on Blu-ray. So, again, I think that's fantastic. And volume one here is the Golden Age of Erotica. So what films do we have? Well, we got Two Naughties to Say No. That's actually directed by Suze Randall, stars Angel, Ginger Lynn, Bunny Blue, Harry Reams, and Eric Edwards. Uh, we have Hot and Saucy Pizza Girls, that's the, one, uh, that's the John Holmes one, uh, directed by Bob Chin, who's actually a, a really good director when it comes to this type of stuff, uh, especially when it comes to like the more comedic stuff. He does a really good job. Uh, it has uh, Desiree Costo, John Holmes, Paul Thomas, C Candida Royal, uh, we, Rebel, Rebel Tales of Canterbury, uh, directed by Bud Lee. We got Aya Pesha Lee. Hope we got that right. Karen Summers, Colin Brennan's in that one. And uh, next up, we got Prisoner of Paradise, another one directed by Bob Chin. This one has John Holmes and Sika, Mei Lin, Gail Palmer, she's pretty famous, and Jade Wong. Now, there's a really good documentary called Desperately Seeking Sika. Uh, basically, there was this guy who was a fan of the adult actress Sika. She had kind of fallen out of the limelight, gone off the grid, and he wanted to find out what happened to her. In a lot of cases like this, when you were looking to find out what happened to somebody, especially if they worked in the adult industry or the early years of exploitation cinema, uh, a lot of times the story that you hear is pretty tragic and, uh, and often sad. In Desperately Seeking Sika, however, watch it and find out. It's a really good documentary. Uh, but it is. It's actually really good. 
You don't even have to like it all films. Just, it's really well done. Uh, last, but definitely not least, the one that I really wanted this for is Dixie Ray Hollywood Star by Anthony Spinelli. Anthony Spinelli is an actual, really cool, great director, when it, especially when it comes to stuff like this. This, when I say there's movies that I, basically, I, I want to see the story, I want to see the acting, it's Dixie Ray Hollywood Star, otherwise known as a color murder baby. That's the softcore edition of the film. Cameron Mitchell, um, is in this film. It stars, uh, John Leslie, Juliet Anderson, Veronica Hart. Now, John Leslie is the guy that I mentioned earlier. He is what I consider the pretty much the topest, the highest they go with acting ability when it comes to these type of films. And this is a film noir, so it is actually as a mystery. And uh, it's, a, it's decent. I mean, he does a really good job in the role. They, it did not need, you know, the scenes are there. That's fantastic. But... Uh, I think on the DVD they, they gave you the, the option of like the, the non-adult version of it. But this one here is Golden Age of Erotica. So I can see why they would stick with the, with the adult versions of these films. That's you know one thing to know going in. These are adult films, but they are done at a time when adult films meant something very, very different than watching what you watch on the internet nowadays. Basically, these were films first and the other stuff came for a lot of these. Films first, with story, with acting, with you know, shot most of the time on film and just shot so well, unlike now. Next up, volume two. And this is really cool, actually. This is the horror and exploitation one. One of these here actually only had 500 copies come out on DVD. And that sense, I'm going to have a print. As you can see, it has a very similar cover, except you can see the, I love the way this is done with the names on it. I will show you the inside of this one, by the way. Uh, on both of these here, there's the, the posters of the films. All five posters of the films are on here, so I'll, I'll show you guys that. But uh, the movies on this one here, we got The Mothers by Sergio Santiago. And me and my better half love cheesy Z-grade uh, films, especially action films and stuff like that. And Sergio Santiago was a guy that really never has disappointed us. And uh, we know exactly what we're getting into when we watch a, a Santiago film, but it's usually a lot of fun. Next up is uh, Flesh and Bullets by Carlos to Tobolina. Uh, really looking forward to that one. This one's kind of a... It's got an interesting cast, too. The, I think, oh yeah, Aldo Ray, Robert Zar, Zadar, Ivan, Ivan DiCarlo is in this, but also saw our adult actress May Lin and Colin Brennan. But it's not... This is not an adult film. It's actually kind of a, a takeoff of uh, Strange Down a Train. This one I have seen a long time ago. I don't remember very well. But I'm pretty sure... I know I saw this. I think I saw it. I gotta have to rewatch it and see if it's the one I saw or not. If it is, then it has something to do with basically same as Strange Line Train, where ex wives well, I think it's ex wives rather than wives in this one. I gotta rewatch it. <gasps> what I remember, which I hope is right, the where it's kind of an alimony thing, where killing each other's spouses, ex spouses, gets, would get rid of that and stuff happens. But, uh, yeah, a confusing film from a confusing film uh, filmography. Carlos Tobolino's bizarre 80s updating of Strangers on a Train features the likes of Van de Carlo and Cesar Romero. Ah, Cesar Romero. Acting alongside May Lin. Uh, that's unique. Next up is Hang Up, and that's uh, directed by John Hayes. I, I don't think I've seen this. I, if I did, I don't remember it. It really intrigued me. I watched, like, a, uh, a trailer on it, and... Uh, it gets, a, it gets a good rating. I'm really interested in seeing how this one goes. Uh, next up is Dungeon of Harrow. I kind of remember this one. Uh, directed by Pat Bayet. Now, Pat, Bay Pat Bayet, I think, is like, was a comic artist of some sort. Uh, I think it's that in te Texas, right? Is this Texas? Certainly, yeah, Texas made. Se 16 millimeter obscurity. Uh, now, what's really freaky and cool about this is uh, it was a, it's kind of a hammer like homage, homage to hammer type of thing. It's uh, it's different. Uh, I'll give you. Uh, I, I haven't watched it since I got it, but I, I kind of remember it. it's kind of low, low budget. And one that this is the one here that I think was about five hundred copies on DVD that's, that's out of print now is Murder on the Emerald Sea. So I'm a huge fan of Alan Ormsby, and Alan Ormsby is the director of this film. Uh, Alan Ormsby is one of the guys that helped kind of like 
fuel on my uh, my love of uh, horror, especially the universal horror and stuff like that. Because when I was a kid, and I've talked about this story so many times on here that you guys are going to be tired of it, uh, I, was, I got a book from Scholastics on uh, the old monster movies. It was written by Alan Ormsby, and even had like instructions in the back to uh, how to dress up and be like your favorite universal monster. This is a really weird film. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen this film, but I did watch a trailer. It's a really weird trailer. Myrtle on the Emerald Seas, it's strange. I have a feeling I'm going to experience Murder on the Emerald Seas. Not to the extent of things, but it's going to be an experience. An experience that, as you guys know, with all these films right here, down the road, I will share with you. I have one more movie to show you before we get to the next section of this video. Why not one more movie, one more set? It's a cool one. I'll be right back. Some of the favorite things in my collection right now are these babies right here. My, uh, my indicator releases. The Hammer ones are not here yet because I'm uh, watching the Hammer films and doing, well, taking some notes and getting ready to make the Hammer versus Amicus video. That's coming up. It's going to take a while, but uh, I'm still working on it. I had a little bit of money left over from my birthday, and I managed to grab another indicator title. It's exact. So I told you guys about it in my last video. I got it for an extremely low price, and I said I was going to tell you which Harry Housen it was, because I got one of the Harry Housen ones. Well, one of them is really hard to get. I haven't been able to get it because it's got it's been super super expensive, and uh, just haven't been able to afford it. And I really wanted it because I want that one. That because once that, uh, the Randall Scott one comes out, that I'll have everyone so far when it comes to their, uh, their box sets. Anyway, I'm very excited about this one today, and that is Ray... There you go. The Wonderful World of Ray Harryhausen, Volume 1. And I'm going to let you guys see the, the number. 5,960. So I'm guessing they're getting pretty much down there with the Ray Harryhausen sets. So let's like open this up and let's really look at it. A good release deserves a good viewing. So, I got a little bit of a... There. This is the artwork for the Ray Harry as one. As you can see, it's not mirrored by any, uh, like, labels or writing or certificates or anything on there. That was all taken care of on that, uh, on that slip right there. So, it's numbers 41, 42, and 43. And there are the features. I'll try and read what I can on there, but uh, if you guys want to pause and read it yourself, there you go, right there. So the three films that this one comes with are Came From Beneath the Sea, 20 Million Miles to Earth, and The Three Worlds of Gulliver. I'm pretty sure The Three Worlds of Gulliver actually has, uh, and 20 Million Miles to Earth, are, this is the first time they were, came in the UK. Now, some of these here, I think The Three Worlds of Gulliver especially was out on Twilight Time. And as I did my, if you watched my last video, my Twilight Time versus Indicator video, you know how uh, who won uh, that one there, and that is uh, these guys right here. And with sets like these, these are the reasons why. Uh, this one here costs me, I don't mind telling you this, because uh, it's gone way up, $59 Canadian with uh, everything in. So that's uh, incredible, considering that for most of the Twilight Time releases that you see, uh, if I want to buy, I don't even know if it's still there, Three Worlds of Gulliver, for instance, that uh, that would cost me about thirty dollars American. I got this whole set. So, read stuff and then we'll look into it. All right, sound good? There's all there's cool alternate artwork on here. These are all, by the way, this was back in the day. This is their first set that they put out. So this is still in the dual format. So they were still doing DVDs and Blu-rays at this point. So I'm sure people that only like Blu-rays probably sold their DVDs on eBay. I see that happen all the time. People will buy like Blu-ray DVD sets and they'll sell the DVD copy of it on eBay and keep the Blu-ray copy of it. I have to keep all of mine. I can't do that. They're my babies. Anyway, so what we got here is a 4K restoration from the original negative of The Three Worlds of Gulliver. Uh, original black and white and alternative colorized version of It Came From Beneath the Sea and 20 million miles of Earth, 20 miles Earth, all restored in high definition, mono and 5.1, surround sound, audio options, new and exclusive interviews with, blah, 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 with celebrated filmmaker Joe Dante, 
as effects maestro Dennis Murin and Ardman Animations, David Sproxton, Peter Lord, and David Dave Alex Reddit. It came from Beneath the Sea. I do a commentary with Ray Harry has and visual effects, not visual effects art experts Randall. William Cook and John Bruno, 20 Million Miles to Earth, Auto Commentary with Ray Harryhausen, and effects artists Dennis Murin and Phil Tippett, and Three Worlds of Gulliver, audio commentary with visual effects art expert Randall William Cook and film historian C. Courtney Joyner and Stephen C. Smith. Remembering it came from Beneath the Sea is 22 minutes long. Remembering 20 Million Miles to Earth is runs at 27 minutes long, a modern-day look at stop motion. Runs at 12 minutes long. Tim Burton sits down with Ray Harryhausen. It's 27 minutes Came from beneath the sea in 20 million miles of Earth comic book galleries. I'm really looking forward to checking that out. Uh, the colorizing pro- colorization process. An interview with 20 million miles of Earth star Joan Taylor. Film, music's unsung hero. Um, uh, David Scheider on composer M- Misha. We're going to go with that. <laughs> the the uh, making of the Three Worlds of Gulliver. Super 8 versions of uh, 20 million miles of Earth and Three Worlds of Gulliver. Isolated scores. Experience Bernard Herman's original soundtrack music. That's really cool, actually. Theatrical trailers, image galleries, new and improved English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Limited edition, exclusive 80-page booklet with experts by, with essays by experts, film, film experts Kim Newman, Dan Whitehead, and Charl, Charlie Brigden, and an in-depth oral history of all three films. Look, the colorization process, UK Blu-ray premiere of 20 Million Miles of Earth and Three Worlds of Gulliver. There were 6,000 copies of this one made. Really, guys, it's a beast that you should check out. Uh, the Hammer sets, these Ray Harryhausen sets, the Sinbad sets, they get the highest recommendation here. From uh, from So if my recommendation means anything for you on any of this type of stuff, if you're into these style films, these are really the way to go in getting them. So let's look at these now. Let's uh, take them out one at a time and take a, take a more in-depth look at it. Good friend of mine, Ken, actually, um, was going to pick up these a couple of the hammers when they were coming out, but uh, I mentioned I mentioned on here to when, when I was doing the video that uh, the booklets may not be included when they break them up and uh, do, do them separately. So uh, Ken actually contacted Indicator, and I said, "Let me know how it uh, how it turns out." You know, the booklets won't won't be included when these do them separately. Uh, and anybody that's interested in getting the indicator ones with the booklets, I recommend getting the uh, the hammer sets as sets. If you're not interested in all the films and you can you can afford it, uh, you can get the sets, keep it as a set. If you're only interested in certain films, you can always just keep those films, and uh, that's what Amazon Store and eBay and all that's for. But uh, this has an 80-page book. It's kind of the same scene there. Really, really cool stuff. So. You can see that the writing on here, it's not too small. It's not like, I like that. I'm getting older, I got glasses. Kind of cool. Not the glasses, but kind of cool to actually be able to read the stuff. And it starts off with like a, uh, a couple quotes. So let's read those, why don't we? The whole point of making a film is to tell a story. That seems to be forgotten. Many films today just rely on special effects. And they have an explosion every five minutes. Who needs it? That was Ray Harryhausen. And, uh... Michael Bay, you, you might want to listen to that. And the other one, Harry Housen stands alone as a technician, as an artist, and as a dreamer. Ray Bradbury. So, there's a table of contents here. This is 80 pages. Stuff from, came from beneath the sea. Some cool. Love this here. I love, I love when they show posters. Isn't that cool? Don't you find it cool when they, re- when they show those old posters? Basically, they talk about you know, the color versions. This one here is like, this is an interview here with, uh, as well, or History, Three Worlds of Gulliver. Yeah, I'm, that's uh, Curran Matthews. I'm a real big fan of Curran Matthews. Three, Three Worlds of Gulliver is one of here. I think that's in, uh, that's legit. Like the other two might have colorization, but Three Worlds of Gulliver actually was in color. So let's start looking at these uh, discs. I do want to do a review of all this stuff down the road of my Sinbad set, uh, of the uh, of all these here. So first off is number. Oh, no, it's not. I'm, I'm a stickler about like showing you these in the right numerical order. 
I was nervous when, when these came because they uh, left them in my mailbox and they kind of shoved them in there and some of the discs came loose because they are dual editions as opposed to right now where they just do the Blu-rays. So this is it Came From Beneath the Sea. I love these covers, guys. I am in love with the artwork that do. The, these are such an old cool. It brings me back as a, uh, as a comic book fan to kind of the early comics and like the classics illustrated and just the way that it's done. It's so cool. There's the uh, 41 right there. You want to stop and look at that. Sorry, I did read the features. Look on the inside and you can see it's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. Do you want to see the other cover? Hmm, maybe? Okay. Let's do that. I think it's really just the same. Is it the same cover? No, but it's similar. I oh, know it's, it's different. That's cool. That looks familiar. That's because it was on the. Uh, okay, is that the Blu ray? The Blu ray and DVD. I love these things. Next up is came from outer space. Twenty million miles to Earth. I just read the tagline. It's been a long night. And again, I love this style of artwork. I love that they did this. And this is forty-two. Blu-ray DVD combo pack. Show you guys the artwork here as well. Okay. And here we've got the inside. Out of space creature invades the earth. 20 million miles to earth. It is no surprise to anybody. By the way, these are all region free. Uh, to know that I uh, adore these uh, these films. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge kid. And uh, being a huge kid, stuff like Ray Harryhausen and Sinbad and the Hammer and Amicus, all that stuff, I, I kind of grew up with that stuff. Uh, some of it seems cheesy now. The effects are in this. I love the effects. You can't beat them. This is Three Worlds of Gulliver. I'm a really big fan of Corinne Matthews. Uh, I like him, you know, has Sinbad. I, I like all oh, his uh, OSS films as well, which, as I said, I do recommend that Kino put out. Let's read this. Love these things. Nothing less than a miracle in motion pictures. Gulliver bids farewell to his love, Elizabeth. She's discovered aboard a ship, a stowaway. The raging storm tosses Gulliver overboard. Are they telling us the film? Uh, washed ashore, captured by the Lil Lilliputans. Culver helps two tiny lovers find happiness. This pretty much is the film. Culver destroys the enemies of Lilliput. Adventures in Brobdingnag, Land of Giants. Okay, why do I want to read? This is literally telling me the film. Watch what we just told you. 43. And again, yep, it's our region. ABC from the Blu-ray, so... Take it out, let you guys see the uh, interior art, the uh, alternate artwork, which I like better. I'm definitely changing this one over. That's really cool, huh? Blu ray or DVD? You're the Blu ray, you go inside. DVD, you go on the outside. What can I say other than I love these movies. I really, really love these movies. They put together a great package. Uh, you cannot go wrong watching indicators work. Now, just so you guys know, I think it's here, actually, close by. I do have some other uh, Ray Harryhausen stuff that I, I sh did show recently in a, in a video not that long ago. But if I can see it here, do, 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 do. 
I'll show it to you guys because uh, I do have like a there it is. I got a North American release as well. So and has a lot of the same films that are on here actually. Pretty much it has two of the films that are on. It doesn't have the uh, three worlds of Gulliver. But it says like the uh, this was the North American release that came out. The uh, Twenty Million Miles Earth came from beneath the sea. Uh, it has like uh, Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, which I got my Sinbad set now, and Earth versus the Flying Saucers. Earth versus the Flying Saucers is the one that the uh, that they could not get the rights to. That's uh, why they uh, they stopped with the three Harriers and sets. The ones they got now. That's the Sinbad set and both Harriers and sets. That's three sets, nine Harriers and films. Amazing stuff. Uh, love this set here, but. Uh, Nothing beats the indicator sets. I'm not gonna lie to you. They're they're fantastic. If you got a chance to get them, they're worth picking up. I really really want the second set. I want uh, I really want Jason and the Argonauts. That's a favorite film of mine. I uh, grew up watching Jason and the Argonauts on TV over and over again. It's probably the most watched Terry Hosen film, in, uh, aside from the uh, the Sinbad films that I've that I've ever seen in uh, my collection. I've even got like a uh, a DVD, like a copy of the uh, of the Sinbad movies as well. When they put the uh, Sinbad movies out on uh, on DVD here in North America, but I'm a huge fan of the company Indicator. I'm a huge fan of our uh, Ray Harryhausen. And uh, let's talk about some other stuff. But isn't that awesome though? Vinegar Syndrome, Indicator, Crazy David at Hasloff, Musical. And a couple of retro things to show you tomorrow in gaming wise. So, uh, yeah. Pretty good birthday with that stuff. Pretty good birthday gifts. And very, a very eclectic uh, haul this time around. I'll be right back and we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit more before I gotta go get my tea. Alright, so in the more newsy type stuff, uh, not sure if I mentioned this or not in my last video. But 88 Films, uh, their Slasher Classics collection is kind of missing one, and that is Blood Harvest. Uh, some, they got some sort of cease and desist letter from a company that, uh, I don't know a lot about film something, ink films around the world or something like that. And it's a real shame. They're, uh, able, they can't sell it on their site anymore. I think they're just getting rid of the, the ones that they still have left. If they're, you have a chance of getting Blood Harvest definitely grab it up. I was it's one that I was hoping to get down the road. I've got a personal store behind Blood Harvest. Basically, uh me and my eldest watched Blood Harvest on ret the Retro Media DVD a long time ago when uh, just little. And uh it was one of the ones that we we kind of had fun with Marvelous Mervo and all that type of stuff. It's very cheesy. And uh the movie somehow got lost along the way. And I thought 88 Films was going to be my way to get back Blood Harvest. But it's not to be. Uh, unfortunately, they are no longer selling the film. I heard that there may be some on eBay. I worry about what price those things are going to go at. If anybody has an extra copy of Blood Harvest you want to send my way, greatly appreciate it. Uh, in all seriousness. Uh, but uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to get this one. It's a shame. Uh, it meant something. It did. It's a silly film, but uh, it meant something to me. You get these movies that you watch at certain times with certain people, and they bring up memories and moments in your life. And uh, this one did. Anyway, aside from that, there's good news, and that is Arrow Academy. And did I say it at the beginning of this video or not? But I'm not sure. I'm going to say it again. Arrow Academy, Arrow Video are having a big flash show going on right now, so go over to the site and check out their stuff. I unfortunately cannot pick anything up right now because I'm moving in a couple months, so every cent that I got is being squirreled away for that uh, upcoming move. Looking forward to uh, to that. Actually, really looking forward to, uh, to getting to a place where my videos can be more consistent. And even as I uh, start working a lot more. So uh, hopefully... Yeah, work's going to be busy and stuff like that coming up. But uh, that being said, looking forward to uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to moving and uh, just getting a more consistent, hopefully quality product out to each and every one of you that take the time to watch, comment, to like, that have sub, that that share. I really, really appreciate it, and uh, 
I'm not going to do C-section tonight because my voice is a little bit gone, and I, I want to keep it for tomorrow. I'm actually uh, downstairs just dreaming of food. So uh, with that said, guys, that's my haul. Uh, that's that's what I got. I want to want to get more in depth with these films. Each of these films I want to be able to review them. All of these here. There's not a film in that bunch that I'm not extremely excited to get at, to watch, to see, to dive into, to really, really like. Yeah, that I really, really like. It's just it it, it, take, it brings it kid me. And as you can see, I'm kind of boppy right now. And uh, you're thinking, thank God, I'm not near. Uh, no. He's got to be annoying. Somebody said once that I'm a little long-winded. So true. Uh, am I a little like? Uh, Boppy and energetic, well, yeah, yeah, that too. So, I gotta go and get some food, work out for a bit, and uh, do some reading before I go to sleep. So, maybe, I, yeah, I'd actually do some reading. I was gonna watch the movie tonight, but uh, I got some stuff to do in the morning, so I'm probably not gonna get to. I'm, it's like I'm, I feel like I'm talking to myself and making mental notes as I do this. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for joining me here tonight in the movie library. Have a great evening. Enjoy your weekend. I will see you again very soon in the movie library.